and welcome back. Well, our next guest is here to share her personal journey with ovarian cancer. It's often considered a silent disease, a whisper killer, because the signs and symptoms are so subtle and vague that it often leads to a delay in being diagnosed. We're welcome. Uh, we're happy to welcome back Cheryl Fig, an ovarian cancer survivor, and Dr. Elizabeth Dixon Michelson, a gynecologic onco oncologist and member of the Wisconsin Ovarian Cancer Alliance. It's a lot to say. Good to see you, <laughs> ladies. I'm so glad to have you here again. Thank you for having us. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about, I mean, we've talked a little bit about ovarian cancer in general um, just a, a week ago and the fact that it's kind of this silent disease. Why, why is that? What is the Ovarian Cancer Alliance and, and why is this disease so kind of under the radar? So with ovarian cancer, a lot of the signs and symptoms of it are ones that women face every single day. Bloating, problems with their bowels, mm -hmm. feeling like they're just getting full faster. Mm -hmm. And so those are things, especially after menopause, that w all women face. So the question is, if you feel like something is wrong, that these symptoms are not going away, it's not something you ate, it's there, go and see your doctor. Make sure that they are listening to you, that they're listening to what's going on, and that you get checked out. It's tough because a lot of doctors will say, change your diet, do this, mm -hmm. get more sleep, drink more water, you know, or, or we ourselves just kind of downplay it, I think, as women. Oh, I must be exaggerating or, oh, it's probably not that, it's probably nothing. Right. You know, it, how about for you? What were the symptoms for you, Cheryl? It, it was very subtle. Um, I, uh, it was in the springtime about five years ago and I had been teaching an aerobic dance class and, mm -hmm. and I just thought I'd maybe pulled a muscle. I started getting little twinges in that area. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't think much of it, but it, it, ca it continued. So I did see my, my general practitioner and she did an exam. And she said, you know, if it continues, because I was going out of the country for a couple weeks, she said, come back and we'll do uh, like a, a, an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And so it, it sort of subsided, but then by August, things were beginning to, uh, you know, I could feel different. Mm -hmm. I was having indigestion and I was beginning to feel bloated. I thought there's something wrong. Yeah. And so when I went in, the ultrasound found uh, a small cyst on each ovary. So, and then within days I, I you know, had seen the oncologist and, and had surgery soon after that, had a full hysterectomy, came back as cancer, um, stage 3C. Wow. All that in that short period of time. Within a, within a month, I had, had 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 was diagnosed, had seen oncologists, and had my hysterectomy. A lot of women will say, well, they've had they've seen that they have cysts, and a lot of mm -hmm. there's no follow up sometimes, you know, because it's normal to have some small right. cysts. So what was it? Was there something in particular about these cysts that they recognized? Well, initially, my doctor said because of my age, I was uh, 58 and I was postmenopausal. He said, he basically said, it's a 60% chance, Cheryl, that it could be cancer. That's a high percentage. Going in. And so we just didn't know. I you know, was very positive thinking it, it wouldn't be because I had had cysts before, mm -hmm. as many women have, and didn't think much of it, but it was and it's okay, yeah. we're here, we're still yeah. here. <laughs> you're active, you're fit, you've been through rounds, you're now five years. Yep, yep, so that's, I consider that a miracle. <laughs> I do too, and I think it's wonderful. And yeah. I'm really happy you're here. Yeah. Especially to share your story and educate women because a lot of women need to hear this story. One of the visuals you guys use is this BEAT visual. Mm -hmm. What exactly is that? So it's basically the symptoms to look out for. So okay. B stands for bloating, mm -hmm. E is changes in eating habits, A is abdominal pain, and T is trouble with either your bowel or your bladder. Okay. So that's what you know, part of the mission of WOCA is to make sure that we're getting this education out to people, that people and women know, not only women, but their doctors too, mm -hmm. know what to look for. Yes, I mean, that's an important acronym to remember. Yeah. Those uh, symptoms were significant for you. They are, and, and the hard thing is, as I talk to other women, um, is that they'll mention stuff and I always suggest, please go see your doctor, mm -hmm. you know, but they are so subtle. And, and because as women, we often get those symptoms with other things that go on in just our general life, yes. that it is difficult. And um, you were so fit and you were so active. I mean, yeah. we've got photos of you doing things. What does this photo represent to That you? was when I was getting chemo my second round. Mm -hmm. um, you'll, I still have my hair in that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> first, first round, I lost my hair. Um, and then uh, second, then about 20 months later, I had a reoccurrence. And so I had to get a, a, some different drugs. And that one, I was lucky enough to, I guess, keep my hair, although that was unimportant, but right. that's me getting chemo. And this was my Aww. daughter's wedding was uh, last, last summer. And we ended up moving that up a year because we just weren't sure the things going on. Yeah. You know, Dr. Dixon suggested, and I said, we'll go for it. And they did. Yeah. It turned out to be a lovely event uh, up at the, 
uh, at, at, a, at a local nature preserve. This is my daughters, Lillian and Millie and I, because <laughs> this is when I, I had, had had long blonde hair. Yeah. And so um, I got it cut. You can see me there in the middle. Mm -hmm. and, and we went to try on wigs. Love <laughs> and that. And then that's before I actually had my hair shaved, but we had a lot of fun just trying on various wigs. <laughs> <laughs> we just made it fun. <laughs> Absolutely, you have to. You have to you know, find, the, find the lightness, find the humor. In, well, in it, it really is. And I think one of the things for me, you know, being diagnosed with cancer obviously is, is, is a devastating news, yeah. but at the same time, it, it, it makes you reflect on your life. It makes you reflect on every day that it, and I, my, my motto is every day truly is a gift and we just keep going forward and I'm trying to make the best of everything and I try to give, you know, and help if anybody wants to talk to me, I'm here for them. Um, you know, I wish sometimes I could do more. I've been very lucky to have just incredible doctors uh, that have been extremely supportive and a great team. So that support system is key. Absolutely. It's, yes. And my husband and my daughters have been there the whole time too. So yeah. thank you. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. Yeah, You've got a lot left to do here. I sense that. So here's the information for WOCO. You've got these great uh, events coming up. Nancy's Run, Rock and Stroll. That's September 9th at Greenfield Park. You can take advantage of that. And then the Whisper Walk is in Madison, and that is at McKee Farms Park. That's September 24th. So take advantage of those. WisconsinOvarianCancer.org is the website to learn more. Phone number on your screen for more information as well. And um, obviously, take advantage of it and know that acronym, BEAT, because it could save your life. Thanks for being here, ladies. Thanks. 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 Thank you.